Welcome grade 6 pupils for mathematics activities. The lesson in this video is about the measurements. We shall begin by looking at how length is measured. What is the length L of the cuboid in centimeters? This is the cuboid. It has length, width and height. We are required to measure the, this side using a ruler. So what do you do? You place the side to be measured along the ruler where the scale is. And this scale is in centimeters and millimeters. So you align this end of the cuboid with the zero on the scale and measure this is one centimeter two centimeters three centimeters and seven millimeters so the length of the cuboid is three centimeters and seven millimeters or 3.7 centimeters a big biro pen is 14.5 centimeters long. What is its length in millimeters? So we want to change centimeters into millimeters. If one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters, how about 14.5 centimeters? You divide 14.5 centimeters by one centimeter then you multiply by 10 millimeters. So 14.1, 14.5 divided by 1 is 14.5. Times 10, you get 145 millimeters. So 14.5 centimeters is equal to 145 millimeters. We want to add a mixture of centimeters and millimeters. We have the diameters of two circles as shown. This circle and this circle. The first diameter is 12 centimeters and 80 millimeters. The second diameter is 7 centimeters and 5 millimeters. So the two circles are joined like that so that we have this line AB which consists of the two diameters. So we want to find the total distance from A to B. Okay, so we make some table with the two columns. On the left hand side we write centimeters at the top. On the right hand side we write millimeters. So we have 12 centimeters and 80 millimeters plus 7 centimeters and 5 millimeters. So you add millimeters separately. 8 plus 5 is 13. We don't write 13 here because that 13 is more than 10 millimeters. So 13 minus 10 is 3. We write 3 millimeters and carry the 10 which is 1 centimeter to this side so 1 centimeter carried from here plus 2 is 3 3 plus 7 is 10 All right carry 1 1 plus 1 is 2 so we get 20 centimeters and 3 millimeters now in this case we want to change millimeters into centimeters. In one hour, a snail moved a distance of 1,000 millimeters. What is the distance that the snail moved in centimeters? We know that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. Or 10 millimeters make one centimeter. Now how about 1,000 millimeters. So we divide 
1000 mm by 10 mm then times 1 cm so 1000 divided by 10 you get 100 times 1 cm you get 100 cm a tailor measured a rectangular piece of cloth and found it to be 56 cm and 4 mm long from, from the piece of cloth he cut off a smaller piece with same width but 15 cm and 7 mm long how long was the piece of cloth that remained now in this question we want to subtract a mixture of centimeters and millimeters so the piece of cloth was 56 centimeters and 4 millimeters in length this part was cut off which is 15 centimeters and 70 millimeters so to find the length of the piece of cloth that remained you subtract this length from the total length so you draw some table in two columns this part you write centimeters and this part millimeters so 56 centimeters and 4 millimeters subtract 15 centimeters and 70 millimeters 4 minus 7 you cannot subtract 7 from 4 so you carry one centimeter from here and add here that one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters so 10 millimeters plus 4 you get 14 millimeters then subtract 70 millimeters you get 70 millimeters right then here you removed 1 from 6 so you remain with 5 5 minus 5 is 0 and 5 minus 1 is 4 so the length of the part that remained is 40 centimeters and 70 millimeters that is how we subtract a mixture of centimeters and millimeters Jan cut a piece of bread into 16 slices of equal thickness if each slice was one centimeter and one millimeter thick what was the length of the full bread before it was divided into slices so we want to see how we can divide or rather how we can multiply a whole number by centimeters and millimeters so we want to find the length of the full loaf of bread that means we multiply 16 slices times the length of one slice or rather the thickness of one slice which is one centimeter and one millimeter so we make a table like this and write centimeter millimeter okay so you write one centimeter and one millimeter multiplied by 16 slices so 16 times 1 is 16 millimeters all right so you don't write 16 millimeters here because 16 is more than 10 to subtract 10 you get 6 millimeters write them here and you carry that 10 which is 10 millimeters which is go to 1 centimeter you carry 1 centimeter and you will add on this side but before that you multiply 16 by 1 you get 16 then plus that one centimeter you get 17 centimeters so 16 times 1 centimeter and 1 millimeter is equal to 17 centimeters and 6 millimeters right so the full bread was 17 centimeters and 6 millimeters a teacher's table is 182 centimeters and 7 millimeters long 
if the length of the table is three times the width of the table, what is the measurement of the width? So we want to see how we can divide a mixture of centimeters and millimeters by a whole number. So we shall divide this length, shall divide by three to be able to get the, the width of that table. So we use long division. We have 182 centimeters divided by three. Three goes into 182, 60 times, write 60 here, okay, 60 times 3, we get 180, then find the difference, 182 minus 180, we get 2, 3 goes into 2, it cannot, alright, so you, you do what? You change these two centimeters into millimeters. So you multiply two times ten, you get twenty millimeters, right? And then add these seven millimeters, you get twenty seven millimeters. So what I'm saying is that the remainder here, which is two centimeters, you change into millimeters by multiplying by ten, you get twenty millimeters, then plus seven millimeters here. 27 millimeters then 3 goes into 27 millimeters how many times 9 times so you find that uh, 182 centimeters and 70 millimeters divided by 3 is equal to 60 centimeters and 90 millimeters so the the width of the table was 60 centimeters and 90 millimeters long Okay, we want to learn something about the circumference of a circular object and the, the diameter. Okay, circumference is just the distance around a circular object, right? And we have this question here, given below is the picture of a funnel of a rain gauge. This is the funnel of a rain gauge which is used to measure rainfall. A grade 6 pupil tied a string around the funnel to measure the circumference. So the child, the pupil tied a string around this funnel like that because he wanted to measure the, the circumference of this, this funnel. And he measured the length of the string using a ruler. So he transferred that length of the string to a ruler to measure the length, okay? And he found that the length was 40.9 centimeters. So the circumference of this funnel was 40.9 centimeters. He also measured the, the diameter D, which he found to be 13 centimeters. So he put a string across this funnel and he transferred the string to a ruler to measure the, the diameter in centimeters and he got it to be 13 centimeters. How many times is the circumference longer than the diameter in this case? So we shall divide the circumference by the diameter. The circumference was 40.9 and the diameter was 13. So 40.9 divided by 13. So you can use the long method. 13 goes into 40 three times. Three times 13 is 39. Okay, for the difference, one. Put a decimal here and add that uh, to nine. Okay, you get 19. All right? 13 goes into 19. How many times? Once. One times 13 is 13. 19 minus 13 is six okay so because you have this the second decimal place you can add zero here to make it 60 13 goes into 60 four times to give us 52 the difference is eight and so on so 
uh, we find that the answer is about 3.14. Let's look at the importance of this uh, uh, expression. When you divide circumference by diameter, what is the importance of this? So uh, let's look at this. What is the importance of circumference divided by the diameter? All right. Circumference divided by diameter, you get a number that does not change. That is a number that is constant. It is called pi. And we use this symbol, this Greek letter, for pi. And its value is 22 over 7 or 3 and 1 over 7. So circumference divided by diameter, you will get a constant. You will get 22 over 7 which is the same as 3 and 1 over 7. So this is what we have found out. And the circumference, let's call it C. The circumference C is equal to, we can multiply both sides by the diameter because you want to find an expression that relates the circumference to the diameter. So we find that the circumference C is equal to 22 over 7 times the diameter. Right? That is, circumference C is equal to pi. 22 over 7 is pi. Is equal to pi times diameter D. So, circumference is equal to pi D. Right? Pi times D. But since the diameter is 2 times the radius, okay? Uh, we find that the diameter is equal to twice the radius. So where we have D, we can put 2R. So we find that the circumference is equal to pi times 2 times the radius. Or we can say circumference C is equal to 2 pi R. Alright? So if you want to find the circumference of any circular shape, it is equal to 2 times pi times radius or it is equal to pi times the diameter that's the importance of this expression now we want to see how we can find the area of a triangle the screen of a laptop computer is 42 centimeters long and 26 centimeters wide. Find the area of one of the triangles formed by a line drawn from one corner of the screen to the opposite corner. So this is the screen. This is the length of the screen and this is the width. So a line is drawn from this corner to this corner. So you have two triangles. How do you get the area of this triangle? First of all, let's get the area of the whole figure. This figure is a rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is equal to length times width, which is 42 times 26 square centimeters, which is 1092 square centimeters. Now let's uh, uh, get the area of this, uh, this triangle. It's actually equal to half of the area of the rectangle. So it is half times length times width in this case. So you get 546 square centimeters which is half of 1092 square centimeters. So you find that from this uh, a, a problem we find that the area of a triangle is equal to half times the base times the height. So this is the formula for getting the area of a triangle half times base times height. We write this way, half times base times height. For any triangle, like this one here, which has the base and the perpendicular height. The base and the perpendicular height. The area is equal to half times base times height. We are supposed to find the area of the shaded part in this figure. Okay, 
it has these dimensions. So this is how we go about it. To find the area of the shaded part, first we find the area of the whole figure. And this is a rectangle. So it is length times width, you get 6 plus 10 is 16 as the length times the width which is 6. So you get 96 square centimeters. And then the unshaded part have labeled A and B. They are triangles. So the area of triangle A is equal to half times base times height. The base is 6, the height is 4. So half times 6 times 4. 2 goes here once, 2 goes here 3. 3 times 4 is 12 square centimeters. Area of B is equal to half times base times height, which is equal to half times the base is 6, the height is 6. So 2 goes here 1, 2 goes here 3. 3 times 6 is 18 square centimeters. So the total area of the unshaded part is equal to 12 plus 18, you get 30 square centimeters. To get the area of the shaded part, you subtract the area of the unshaded part from the area of the whole figure. So that is the area of the whole figure is 96, then minus the area of the unshaded part, 30. You get 66 square centimeters. That's the answer. How to change liters into cubic centimeters? Change 2 liters into cubic centimeters. Alright, this is a, a cube, a container which is a cube, and it has these dimensions. The length is 10 centimeters, width is 10 centimeters, and the height 10 centimeters. So the volume of this uh, figure is equal to length times width times height, which is equal to 10 times 10 times 10 cubic centimeters. So you get 1000 cubic centimeters. So you find that this volume is equal to 1 liter. 1 liter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeters. Now, if 1 liter is equal to 1000 cubic centimeters, how about 2 liters? That 2 liters will be 2 over 1. 2 liters of 1 liter times 1,000. So you get 2,000 cubic centimeters. Convert 200 cubic centimeters into milliliters. We have seen that 1 liter is equal to 1,000 cubic centimeters. And we know that 1 liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. That means 1,000 cubic centimeters is equal to 1,000 milliliters, which implies that 1 cubic centimeter is equal to 1 milliliter. How about 200 cubic centimeters? We divide 200 cubic centimeters, divide by 1 cubic centimeter, you get 200 times 1 milliliter, you get 200 milliliters. Alright, so cubic centimeters are equal to cubic milliliters. Let's see how we can add a mixture of tons and kilograms. In a construction work, 3 tons and 140 kilograms of gravel, 1 ton and 980 kilograms of sand, and 1 ton and 50 kilograms of cement were mixed to make concrete. Find the total mass of the ingredients. So to add uh, those uh, 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 those masses we will make some table this for tons this for kilograms so three tons and 140 kilograms plus one ton and 980 kilograms plus one ton and 50 kilograms zero plus zero plus zero is zero four plus eight is twelve plus five seventeen right seven carry one one plus nine is ten ten plus one is eleven so we have 1,170 kilograms. We can't write everything here because that one is more than one ton. One ton is equal to 1,000 kilograms. So you can't write 1,170 here. You subtract 1,000 from what you got. So you get 
1170 uh, minus 1000, you get 170. So write 170 kilogram here and carry that one turn to this side. So 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, 5 plus, plus 1 is 6. So you get 6 turns and 170 kilograms. Let's look at the 24-hour system and the 12-hour clock systems. All right. This chart was made by a grade 6 pupil. We use it to convert 24-hour to 12-hour and vice versa. So we find that in the 24-12-hour clock system, the day begins at midnight. Okay. It begins at midnight and ends at midnight, the following night, the following midnight, all right? So from midnight, from here, midnight to noon, it is a.m., which means after midnight. So we have 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 7 a.m., like that, up to noon. And from noon to midnight, it is PM, this PM, which means past midnight. So we have 1 PM, 2 PM, 3 PM, 4 PM, like that. Now for the 24 hour clock system, we find that the number of hours that make a day are written progressively up to 24 hours. So after midnight, we have 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 2, 0, 0, like that progressively up to noon we have 12, 0, 0. then we have 13 14, 15, 0, 0, like that so in this particular case time is written as the number of hours after midnight so here we have 1 hour after midnight 2 hours after midnight we have 14 hours that is 2pm 14 hours after midnight 15 hours, 16 hours, like that, all right? A four-digit number is used to show time. For example, we have 0800. So 08 means the number of hours after midnight, and this 00 means the, 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 the number of minutes during that particular hour, all right? So, uh, let's continue. The first two digits, they will tell you the number of hours after midnight. And the last two digits, they will show the number of minutes past that hour. Like I said, this one is 14.00. It means after midnight, these are 14 hours and 0 minutes. That's how we use the 12-hour clock system and the 24 hour our clock system. Next, let's see how we can find uh, profit and loss, financial matters or money matters. James bought a cow and a goat at shillings 20,000 and 6,000 respectively. He sold both animals at a total price of 30,000 shillings. How much profit did he make? Right? To find the profit, we need to know the buying price, which was 20,000 plus 6,000, that is 26,000. We also need to know the selling price, which was 30,000. So profit is equal to selling price minus buying price, which is equal to 30,000 minus 26,000, you get 4,000. That's how we calculate profit. That's the end. If you find the video useful, kindly like, share, and subscribe to view more videos. Thank you so much.